C programmers. We're going to talk about moving your functions into separate files today. But first, I will start with this example where everything's all in one file. I have a little function add to that takes two input integers. It adds them together and returns the result that's going to be another integer. And I test it out in main. I call add to and pass in five and six. It'll add those two numbers together, return 11 into the result variable, and print that to the screen. So right now, everything's in the same file. I just have to compile GCC and the name of the file, and then I run it and I can see the result of 11. But this doesn't help if I want to use this function in more than one program. So if I have like three or four different programs and they all want to use a function, then one solution would be copy and paste this function and plop it down in the three different programs. But that's not the best solution. So another solution would be, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Let's copy this and move it into another file called, and I'm gonna call it add2.c because that's the name of my function. And I had already actually set this up ahead of time. So I've got this, the body of the function is moved to a separate file and I'm gonna remove it from the original code. And I also want to create another file that is has the prototype for that function. So this other file will be a header file. I'm gonna call it add2.h, and I also set that up ahead of time. All it has is the prototype of that function. So just add2 that takes two integers and returns an integer. And so anyone that wants to use this function, they can pull in that prototype include that prototype and because it's a file that I made that's in the current directory I'm going to use double quotes instead of um, a less than and greater than sign around my header file so I've got I'm going to pull in that prototype so that the compiler knows it's okay to call add to and pass into integers and return an integer and then I'll print the result now so adding in this pound include with the header is new and the way I'm gonna compile it now is also different. So now when I compile it, I need not only main.c, but I need add2.c. So any of your .c files that have code that your program needs, you're gonna compile them together, and the executable is still gonna be a.out as a default, and we can run that and see that add2 does produce a result of 11. Now, when you're getting into more complicated programs, you're going to see three extra lines added to header files. There's two at the top and one at the bottom. So at the top, you're going to see if not defined and then some kind of a what looks like a variable name. So I'm going to say add to underscore h. That's kind of the name of the file, only everything's capitalized, and there's an underscore instead of a period. So if that hasn't been defined yet, and it won't be defined the first time you try to bring in that file, if it's not defined yet, then you're gonna define that so that the next time someone tries to include the exact same header in your program, you're gonna skip over this block of code. And then at the end of your file, you're gonna have an end if. <clears throat> so those three lines, we call those guards, and they're, it's guarding the contents of this header file and making sure it's only included once. So it wouldn't matter in, I mean, this is not ideal, but it doesn't matter if you accidentally include the same header twice. And you wouldn't normally do it in the same file, but if you're including something that includes something else that includes something else, then you might accidentally end up including the same thing twice. And those guards enable you to compile and run that. And it's no name collision because you're guarding and making sure that that prototype is only included once in your program. So that was just a very simple example. Let me bring up my main again so you can see all three of those files that are working together side by side. So we've got our main and we're including any header files that have prototypes for functions we want to use. We've got another file that has the body of our function and then we've also got the header file down here. 